Hi everyone. Uh, so another recipe that people have been asking me for is our red onion marmalade, and here it is. So we got uh, our red onions. I chose red onions because I like the flavor of them better than a white onion, but you can use any onion you like. You can use white onions, Spanish onions, uh, Vidalia onions would be nice because they're nice and sweet, um, but I am using red onions. So in order to slice them properly, I took the tails, tops and tails off, which is the ends, and then uh, took the peels off. Now we'll cut, cut, uh, cut them in half, and you slice them this way. Some people slice them this way. I like to slice them this way because I find them to be more consistent. And we're going to try and slice them as thinly as we can. We don't have to do them like paper, paper thin, but the thinner they uh, are cut, the better they'll be in the marmalade because you'll be able to cook them out faster and there won't be such huge chunks obviously in it at the end. So. This marmalade, uh, we use it in several ways at the parlor. Um, one of them is on our chicken and brie sandwich, which is, uh, we're pretty proud of that one because we make the marmalade in-house, we make the aioli that goes on it in-house, we bake the bread, the focaccia bread that it goes on in-house, and for the chicken, we buy in whole chickens and we break them down ourselves into the breasts and the legs. So it's as fresh as possible. Um, which we try to do for a lot of our items. That, that item in particular, the bread is, you know, everything's made in uh, as a parlor, so. And it is our, next to the burger, I think is our most popular item on the menu, which is awesome. So I got a pot on. It's on medium heat right now. Got your onions. Oh, when you're slicing this many onions, usually people start crying. I don't really cry when I slice onions because I use a sharp knife. But see, really, you hear about a lot of things where you put a piece of bread in your mouth, or a toothpick, or you wear goggles, or you put the uh, onion in the freezer to keep it from all the acid in the onions from doing this. The best way, I think, is just using a sharp knife. That's it. It slices through instead of crushes everything. Um, if it crushes the onion with a, with a dull blade, it will let the moisture do this in the air. Whereas a, a sharp knife, you just slice through it and it stays here. So that's why you don't cry with a sharp blade. So I got the pot on medium heat over here. I'm going to add a little olive oil. Just enough to get it to this something to cook with in there. And we're gonna go into the pot with all our onions. This looks like a lot of onions, but it actually won't be when we're done because we're gonna cook it uh, out so all the moisture comes out of it. I'm going to turn up the high heat. And I'm going to add some sea salt. This is flaky sea salt. You can be generous with it because we're going to add enough sugar, a lot of sugar. So I uh, want to make sure that it's balanced out, seasoned properly, and some black pepper. that in. The salt will also help the moisture come out of the onions while you're cooking them in the pot here. So it's not just for seasoning, it's actually doing a, doing a science type job. <laughs> okay, so we're going to cook this out in the oil for about five minutes and uh, we'll let, I'll show you what it looks like after that. 
Okay, so we've been cooking for a few minutes now on high heat. Now I turn it up to high heat. So it's softening the onions a little bit. The salt pull out a little moisture to help soften them up. And then you see some browning around the edges of the pot. So now I'm gonna add some fresh bay leaf. I got a little fresh bay leaf. Uh, I was mentioning in another video how it was hard to find these. Um, and then uh, the next day my dad drove over with some, so <laughs> I said, what do you mean or it's hard to find fresh bay leaves? I got a whole tree in my house. <laughs> Gee, thanks dad. So I just added five fresh ones. It seems like overkill, but I swear to God, like, bay leaf is like one of the best herbs you can use. And only putting one in anything doesn't do anything. You gotta, you gotta put like five or 10. So I just sauteing the bay leaves in with the onions just for a minute to kind of help release their oils and I rub them together to help do that too. I have some water here. Now we're trying to cook out the water. So I added some water, why? Well, I want to cook the onions out so they're not crunchy anymore and you need to add moisture to do that. But we're going to be evaporating all of this water anyway so it really doesn't matter how much water you add. As long as there's enough water to help with the cooking of the onions. I don't want any crunchiness in these onions at all because uh, it kind of ruins the texture of it because it's supposed to be like a jam, right? So I added water. All the brown bits on the pot, I just scraped them off of the pan here to get them in the onions to, add the, to bring the flavor into the onions. Uh, that's called deglazing when you do that. You can do that with wine. You can do that with uh, vinegar, which I also have here. I did it with the water. So that's white wine vinegar I just added. We're gonna reduce that down too. So that's just gonna cook out. Uh, we're gonna turn it down to low and let it cook to soften the onions up. And we're gonna evaporate all the liquid out. And we'll do the next step at the end. All right, our marmalade is just about ready for the brown sugar. So it's been cooking for about 20 minutes or so on medium low. And you see how they're softening up. They're not really uh, crunchy or anything underneath my spoon. They're kind of just melting. They're not done cooking yet though. So we're gonna add, you're gonna cook it down until there's almost no liquid left in the pot, as you can see. There's a little bit left, but you need that to help dissolve the sugar, but almost gone. So then we're gonna add some brown sugar. This looks like a, brown, a lot of brown sugar, but that's because it is a lot of brown sugar. <laughs> Uh, but you know, that might, you might think that might make it not so healthy or good for you, but that's not necessarily true because you're making it from scratch at home. There's no preservatives or anything in here, so it's not too bad. Now we're just gonna let the sugar dissolve and we're gonna continue to cook it out on low heat until almost all the liquid is gone and the sugar has uh, glazed all the onions. That'll probably take another 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so the marmalade looks done. It's been simmering on low for another 15 minutes since we added the sugar. And it's nice and soft. And it looks like jam or marmalade. And there's almost no liquid left. You can be able, should be able to should be able to move your spoon through it and not have a flood of of liquid fill it up right away. And then you're done. So this is something we you could use uh, on the, a sandwich or in a in au jus for a piece of beef or a steak. Um, you could just put it on some cheese and crackers, like charcuterie board stuff. So, all kinds of stuff we do with it at uh, at the parlor. Um, but you know, all kinds of stuff you could do at home as well. So you can just keep this in a jar, and it will keep in the fridge for like three, four weeks because of all the sugar and vinegar. And uh, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed and thanks for joining me today.